What's up guys, welcome to Free Dive Passion. Today I want to talk about how to make little changes into your diving and then how to implement that into your training. As free divers, most of us are on some sort of journey. And a part of that journey for most people is getting better just in some way. Whether that's something to do with time, distance and depth, um, the amount of relaxation that you feel underwater, or just being able to spend more time down there and just chilling with the fishes. This video was aimed towards the people who are interested in improving their time, depth and distance. My examples are going to be to do with depth, because that's where all my expertise lies, but the principles are easily transferred into the pool disciplines as well. Now, if there was one correct way to freedive, then we would see all the top level athletes free diving in this manner. The fact that the top level guys have such a different variation of free diving styles and techniques tells us that there is no one right way to free dive and that in fact you need to find the right way for you. Now nobody can tell you what the right way for you to dive is. The only way for you to find out is to experiment, try different things and see how they feel. By this I don't mean to try something new every time you go out. If you want to add a new thing to your diving, then you need to do this thing enough times for it to become automated. You need to practice and practice and practice over and over this new aspect of your diving until it starts to feel natural and it's happening automatically. Only then you can start to judge whether it's a positive change or a negative change for your diving. To try a new skill just one or two times, not be comfortable and say, no, I don't like this thing, I can't relax, is well, stupid for the lack of a better word. Of course you're not relaxed, it's something new. But it doesn't mean that it's not going to make your free diving better in the long run. You can be completely relaxed with bad technique and completely unrelaxed with good technique, but there's nothing inherently relaxing or unrelaxing about either way you dive. It's just you're used to one and you're not used to the other. So you simply just need to do the repetitions, drill it into your mind, drill it into your subconscious until it's become automated and it will become relaxing. Okay, and then you can start to gauge whether it's effective or not for you. So automation is the key of, for all your free diving. If you want to reach deep levels of relaxation, the physical movement, it's got to be automatic. It's got to be done without any thought. And that's going to leave your mind free for like the, the more enjoyable aspects of free diving, like just letting go and being at peace and completely relaxing and pre relaxed and present in the moment. These are the nice parts of free diving, not you know, thinking about your mouth fill or um, your finning technique. So when you come up with a new idea, a new concept that you want to start to try, automation, that's, the, that's where you want to reach before you can make a decision about whether you like this technique or not. And how do you get to automation? Repetition. If it's a completely new skill, you'll need to do a lot of repetitions. If you're trying to rewrite over an old skill, like let's just say a change to your, your finning technique, then it might even take even more repetitions. So what this means for you is, let's say you're, uh, you're typically diving to 60 meters, let's say for instance, and you want to practice, um, let's say, topping up your mouth fill. Okay, you can only top your mouth fill until 30 meters. So it doesn't make any sense for you to do 60 meter dives because you'll only be able to do one or maybe two dives per session. Whereas if you're doing 30 meter dives, then you could do, let's say like five to eight dives per session. So you get to practice topping up your mouth fill five to eight times. Basically what I'm saying is drop the depth to the shallowest depth that you possibly can while still practicing the new technique or the new aspect of your diving that you want to practice and drill. Another great tool for putting new habits in place is visualization. There's been a lot of research and a lot of study on visualization and it's pretty much undeniable how useful this tool is. Um, I'm not going to go too deep into how I use visualization right now. I'm going to make a separate video on that. But I have been using it recently and I found it extremely useful. The reason is we can only do so many dives per session. But the more often we practice this new skill, this change to our diving, the sooner it's going to become a habit and automated. So if you can keep practicing that even when you're not diving, just visualizing it in your own mind, um, it just basically, it saves you a lot more time. Whereas you would have spent two weeks or three weeks drilling this new habit make it, to make it automated. Maybe you can cut that in half or even a third. 
Another great tool is dry training and pool training as well. So if your change is something that can be practiced in the dry or in the pool, such as equalization in the dry or your finning technique in the pool, then that's amazing. Because once again, you can just get more repetitions in than you would be able to at depth. And once again, that means you're going to become automated sooner, um, which not only means you can judge this change in your technique, it also means you can enjoy your diving more. Now the idea for making this video came from myself because recently I've made more changes to my constant weight diving at one time than what I've ever made before in my life. So I've had to use all these different tools to start to implement these changes in my diving um, and it's just been incredibly quick. I'm already automated more than what I've ever been before actually because my equalization now is I don't need to think about it at all, it's happening automatically. Um, so I'm going to go over some of the changes I made and some of the tools I use for each of these changes. So I've made changes to my breathe up, I've made changes to my buoyancy, um, now I'm negatively buoyant much deeper. I've changed my finning technique with the monofin and my free fall as well. Like I already mentioned, the tools that I used to create automation with these new changes was repetitions at depth, pool training, dry training and visualization. For the breathe up, I could use all four of these tools, so my breathe up became natural very, very quickly. Changing my buoyancy basically changed the order that I do things. In the past, I used to hit my free fall and then take my mouth fill. Now, because my buoyancy is much deeper, I need to take my mouth fill while I'm still finning, and then later on, I'll, I'll start my free fall. So really, this could only actually be practiced at depth, but I also incorporated this into my visualization and I also incorporated it into my dry training when I was kind of simulating a dive during the dry. For my finning, I'm now incorporating three different styles of finning depending on what part of the dive I'm in. Um, and I could practice this during repetitions, I could practice it in the pool, I could practice it with my visualization and I could practice it with my dry training as well once again while simulating my dives in the dry. The change I made to my free fall was in the past, I used to bring myself into the line and just ring my finger around the line so I could feel myself moving down the line. I've started to free fall away from the line and um, just with my hands by my side. So this is coming into the line and ringing the line. It was a habit that was automated. And I found when I made the change, I always had the instinct to move into the line, which I then had to correct and move away from the line, which kind of ruins my flow and relaxation. So I was practicing this in the water, obviously doing um, repetitions at depth. I practiced this in my visualization and I practiced this as well with my dry training, simulating my dive. This is the first time that I've put such an importance towards um, visualization and dry simulations of my dive. And I've got to say, it's helped me a lot. Like I've never been able to become automated in new skills, especially this many skills, in such such a short period of time. Like maybe just a week, and all these changes are already feeling completely natural to me. Okay, so one final thing that I want to touch on: no matter how tempted you are, if you're trying something new, you don't do that on a near maximal dive or a PB. Near maximal dives or PBs. They're not designed at all, or they're not meant at all for trying new things. They're meant for just testing out the skills that you already have. The reason is, the way that you dive is going to dictate the point at which you're going to become hypoxic. The reason we do slow jumps and gradual progression is so that we can gently feel out if we're going to be hypoxic or not. So let's say you try 58 and come up with blue lips, then you know not to try 60 because you're probably going to come up and have an LMC. Okay. So you've been increasing with these gradual steps. Now, if you're gonna try a new depth or a near maximal depth and you change something, then you've changed the way you dive, which has also potentially changed the point which you're gonna become hypoxic. Now, even if this change in the long run is going to be a positive change, just the fact that it's something new can affect your relaxation, affect your flow state, which is gonna cause your oxygen consumption to be much quicker. And there's a potential that you could black out. So the point is changing something or trying something new is gonna change your maximum potential. Maybe for the better, maybe for the worse. The point is you don't know. So when you're testing out this new thing, you bring your depth back to the minimum possible 
let it become automated, then slowly build up your depth again. So you're testing this new set of skills that you have and start to bring yourself back towards your PB. Of course, paying attention to, um, to how you're feeling on the dive and if you are coming up with any signs of being close to your hypoxic limit. All right, guys, that's it. Anybody out there that feels like they're ready to take their diving to the next level or feel like they're kind of stuck in a plateau and they've got no idea how to get past this plateau, then just get in touch with me, come on to Dahab, and we can do some training together. I'm certain that I can help you. The weather's good all year round. It's the middle of winter right now. I'm wearing a t-shirt and sweating. <laughs> um, that's it, guys. I hope you're all having a good winter. Take it easy and dive safe.